Welcome to Scarn, a land fraught with peril, adventure, and most of all, change. Around every corner lies a forgotten civilization. Behind every tale of adventure lies a journey fraught with temptation. Scratching the surface usually leads to breaking the veil between this era and the last. And those who look to fill in the edges of the map usually don't come back. This is a world where one if, will, if one is willing, you can become famous or a hero or just as easily forgotten. A world where every gamble has the odds against you and the punishment is final, death, but the reward, your heart's desires. What would you do with endless opportunity and adventurer's spirit? We look to our players, heroes already in their own rights, to see how they plan to continue their legend. I bid thee greetings, redeemed and divine races, titan spawn and ancient ones. I am Patrick, known by the whisper on the sea breeze and the hearts of dragons as Patty Shakes underscore, and I am the game master for this story. This is session six. I finally get to use two hands of our continuing campaign, Draco Genesis season two, A Flight of Whimsy, taking place in Scarred Lands, a setting published by Onyx Path Publishing. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales on lots of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribing. Check out all of our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at Vorpal Tales, where you can get updates about the cast and our goings-ons. A website of vorpaltales.com, where, where you can get links to our affiliates and see our up-to-date calendars. A Patreon and a Ko-Fi, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss, toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tailier content. I'd like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. Also to Astro Tabletop for being a virtual tabletop where we can see the baddies look to waylay our heroes and get that sweet, sweet ambiance. Speaking of ambiance, the thank you goes to Vinsept, a YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. Additionally, Warped Tales has some fantastic sponsors we'd love to tell you about. First is QEmpire.com, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code of Vorpal Tales for 10% off. Next is Hit Point Press, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VorpalTales.com, click our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion of it will benefit our show. Our newest uh, sponsor would be Dungeon Crate. Dungeon Crate is the original RPG loot box, delivering tabletop gear like dice, minis, and terrain, plus original adventures to your castle doors each month. Become a member and get your crate today. And you can do that by going to dungeoncrate.com using the discount code VORPALTALESDC, that's all caps, VORPALTALES, Delta Charlie, for $5 off a new subscription. Hey, you can't beat that. Uh, I, I just got the notification that mine was in the mail, and I'm uber excited. And finally is Gem Hammer and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from Dex of Wonder to Dex of Illusion and Dice. Once again, use discount code Warple Tales for 10% off. They actually just started their own, uh, a Kickstarter. Be on the lookout for uh, Rolock Guide to Violence. It has already would met you, its goal. Would you like me to post that link in the chat? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Ambrose is going to post the link to their Kickstarter right now. Uh, it has already met its goal, but there are oodles and oodles of stretch goals that you should absolutely do. Uh, it's awesome. And uh, actually, you should be on the lookout for a special Tournament of Champions style uh, gaming format that Vorpal Tales is part of, along with several other gaming uh, groups, uh, all done by Gem Hammer to bring out some hype for Roblox Guide to Violence. Uh, our, we had a little mini group uh, go last week. It was pre-recorded. Uh, we'll be sure to post everywhere that we post when it is, goes live to watch. But uh, you can absolutely check out our team and how well they did. And uh, it's a very fun uh, little scenario we ran. It was kind of a team v team. Things we did affected the other team. Um, you should absolutely go check it out. Patty, would you say that the guide itself helped you to access violence? Was uh, it effective I would... in doing that? I would. Uh, yes, uh, I yeah. choose violence more often uh, in my day-to-day -day habits now. <laughs> and I found that it has made me a better person. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. 
that's all the uh, all, all the formal stuff out of the way. Now let's get to the good stuff. Let's meet our intrepid adventurers who look to sail, slay, search, seduce, and shift to the very core of Skarn. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you'll be playing tonight. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him, and tonight I am playing Le Malthoon, the Jirndali elf rogue who does Jirndali elf rogue things. And drugs. Uh... <laughs> And it drugs. Counts. And drugs. That's positive. Okay, all right. How's that positive note? Uh, I am John, otherwise known as J3 Billion, and I will be doing my best impression of Devalkar, Eldritch Knight. Friends, my name is Beatrice, but you can call me Birdie. I am only here only on Fridays, but very, very happy to be here and to be portraying Seeker Pajat, a seeker of scholarly truths who's not a warlock. Definitely not a warlock. Um, hi, friends. My name's Keem. So you can find me on the interwebs almost everywhere at It's Me Keems. Tonight, I will be playing Sayana, the death cleric, um, who's also a hollow legionnaire. Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they, which everyone pops in your mind first. And you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. And tonight I shall be playing Yanei, whose pronouns are they, them. And, uh... Wow, my brain just skipped out on me. Next! Master of the Ranged Stabby. Master of the Ranged Stabby. From the... Broadreach. Mm. Precisely <laughs> Broadreach. Also, I have something for Le Malthoon. Alex? <laughs> Please tell me you've seen the owl gif. Drugs. Okay, thank you. You want drugs? Drugs. drugs? So, hello all. It is me, Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and tonight I am playing Gar, the Redemption Oath Paladin who is totally not pretending to be not himself. Alrighty. Thank you, adventurers. Now, we shall have the indomitable Lamalfoon. Please give us a summary of events from two weeks ago. <clears throat> when last we left our adventures, we slew a fucking Hydra. Our clash raged on through the night, battling back rending teeth and wicked claws. Devok tore heads asunder with thrown blades and slung fire. Yene threaded flaming arrows through its tide of skulls with precision. Gar took up the front, blocking deadly blows and returning fatal jabs. Sayana was a force to be reckoned with, sucking the very life from the beast. Seeker Pazat was quick to retreat and quick to return with reinforcements. They tried. <laughs> Lamalthoon took the long road to the creature's heart and rent it apart with a psychic slash. Bathed in fire and blood, we overcame the many headed beast and tore it apart for scrap. And thus we returned to Vashon in the dead of night, reeking of battle and craving nothing more than rest before our journey in the morning. Well, most of us did, that is. Bazat hung behind, telling the rest that they intended to help the townsfolk organize their defenses and dispose of the corpse. Thus, we parted. And thus, the rest of the party, what happened to the night of the new moon. In a glade far from the eyes of the redeemed and divine, the Seeker began a ritual. A pillar of shadow blacked out the moon, and in that infinite darkness spoke the voice of Messos, the long-dead titan sire of sorcery. The creator of all magic made his orders clear to the seeker then. I cannot do the voice. Dream of my resurrection, and claim the power that makes dreams into reality. 
I did not know about any of this. I am quite displeased. <laughs> Hours later, they silently snuck back into the city, and that morning we received Florian's thanks and delivered the Hydra's heart and lungs to Zalmuth and Adalia, respectively. Our business thus concluded, and we went to meet the king one last time. He gave us his thanks as well for slaying the Hydra, and as we, re and as we readied ourselves on the teleportation circle, we, he bade us farewell. I seem to remember some sort of devious smile as we left. I'm sure you're making that up. Hmm. Well, right he's a good guy! He's totally a good guy. <clears throat> right before we left, Lomaldun let it slip that we'd already puzzled out the king sent two more parties than he'd told us. Something new cracked across the Dragon King's face. A brilliant smile of amusement. Then light engulfed us, and we found ourselves greeted by an unfamiliar face in a port town. We met the Navigator. Modeled with fiendish features and an eagerness to leave, we are the last arrival. Not a good omen for our place among the others. Out over the coast, the open sea beckoned, a fleet of five ships for each rival team of dream seekers. The clear blue sky set a chill down our spines, even as the sun tingled against our skin. Somewhere out there in the blossoming sea lay the Drifting Isle. Somewhere on that isle, or beyond it, lay the prize we seek. Somewhere in the waters, the foam spells out Dracogenesis, Season 2, A Flight of Whimsy. Excellent. Uh, as always, uh, the wonderful summary written by Bernie and delivered by Steve. We well, appreciate your hard effort, and you may both have a DM inspiration for your awesomeness. I was I'm not going to forget that smile, that. Steve. I got you fucking covered. <laughs> yeah, you got me. I should, should never have questioned. He's and just you happy you guys are going to go on this journey for him. Gosh. <laughs> Everyone always thinks the king's evil in every single dean. I don't play into stereotypes, people. Do you not have uh, opinions about monarchies themselves, Patty? But by not playing into stereotypes, it's how I lull you into a false sense of security. And they're going <clears> to <throat> play into that stereotype without you knowing. But then it's not actually a stereo. No, we're not going down the hole. Oh, God. Okay. Nope, 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 okay. nope, not going there. It's All right, not... so. I have broke the seventh wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, as you put, uh, last we left off, there was a Hydra killing. All that awesome role play had happened as well. Also, uh, if I remember correctly, like I said, this is the first time I get to use two hands uh, to uh, say how many sessions we had. And that alerts me that um, y'all should probably level up. So let's level up. Oh, hell yeah. I would like to point surprise! out- Surprise! Oh, surprise, yeah. level up, woo! I, I would like <laughs> to point out that in sign language, it would still be on one hand. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. This many. Yep. Or this many, depending on- Now, <clears throat> now I'm- like to interpret it. Now I'm regretting forgetting everything I learned in Mandarin class. Because you can also count to ten on one hand in Mandarin. What? That's cool. Yeah. Well, let's if you, count if, to if seven super tonight. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you super nerd it up. You can count thir thirty-one with one hand. Hey, Patty. I have a question for you. Um, during our last session, before I forget, we uh, said that we would roll on the random chaos chart for That's right, magic for your weapon. for your item. That's right. Uh, yes, so I will do that while you guys start doing the process of leveling up. Uh, we just kind of free form here, no, no, no strict need to be, but if you guys just kind of want to, uh, as you're pulling it up, either in the Beyond or whatever, a uh, player's handbook or however you want to look at it, um, just kind of say, uh, uh, what you're getting on this level up. Um, if it's nothing, then it's nothing. But no, I don't think there's really ever nothing for most characters. Um, there's at least a spell slot or, you know, new spells you get to learn or something. Um, 
So I have two things to say very quickly, if that's okay. Absolutely. One to Patty. Mm -hmm. Narf redeemed Banish the Elder Gods. <laughs> Which means Kay. something good has to happen to us that you didn't plan. It's almost <laughs> like you're leveling up. <coughs> no, that was no. <laughs> hey, you know what happens if you get greedy, motherfucker. We started this yeah. game with a legendary item each. It's true. Weapons, no less. Uh, that said, true. if it's working, Patty, listen to what he's saying. <laughs> I know, I, I I know how to work, Patty. I've... Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. sure. I don't need to hear about your nightlife. Yeah, yeah you do. What about oh. your light knife? Speaking of light knives, um... what about what about knives? Nice, oh, nice. that's a very knife nice knife you have there. Knife yeah. check. Wait, hold on. Mine's in the other room. Wait, are we in the other room too? I got a cut. Yeah, I got I got one of them knives. At all times. Yeah. I got one of them knives too. Pass the knife check. God damn it. Hey, I'm Ambrose. Lame. Pass the knife check. Ooh. I'm lame as fuck. Oh wait, one nope. I got one right here. Does my cat claws want. count? I don't Absolutely. Have knife. 100%. Totally counts. <laughs> are and uh, are you there we go. Pass the knife check. Are you giving your knife its mineral bath? I didn't know this. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Patty. Yes. This level, I no longer need to eat, drink, or breathe. <laughs> Additionally, once on each of my or once during each of my turns. Secret that's creature, a good guy, guys. <laughs> when I hit a creature with an attack and roll damage, I can replace the damage with necrotic at will. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Damn! <laughs> Mezos has gifted you. I mean, no, you're not a warlock. Wait, hold on. What? This is shush. Uh -oh. Hey. I don't even know that. <laughs> what I am is an upstanding citizen, as little as I like this hegemony. Hmm. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Take it up with Verdu. Uh, can I sort this? Oh, crap. Yeah, medical sign. Um... So what was your second thing, Monothan? Well, I was going to ask the party if they would be at all uncomfortable if I went back to the original build Lamalthun had in Season 1. Um... Because I, I just... I feel that I was identifying more with that mechanical build than Rogue. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Which, which was a fighter wizard. You were a fizzard. I, fizzard. I, I liked, I, I kind of liked the mechanically useless aspect of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, there was, um, there was some things in there that I was hoping to, to, to try out that I thought was going to, um, work well so but only make a dramatic change like that if the party is okay with it so, okay whatever makes your character enjoyable for you to play okay i appreciate that now i just gotta figure out how to do that magic yeah i think i'm gonna actually need some magic because yeah So, do I have to choose between leveling up my rogue or ranger? Or do they both uh, auto? Yes. No, you get you get one level and you have to spend it basically in a class of your choosing. <clears throat> okay. Also, question: The mm -hmm. modifier is is your number minus ten halved, right? Wait, what? Your your modifier proficiency uh, modifier. Every two above ten is plus one. Is how I always remember. Oh. It. 
Right, okay. Gotcha. No. Yes, that. No. That does answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to help. Uh, out, out of context, Devin, that shouldn't say manly. It should say manually. I. I knew what you meant. I knew what you I meant. I don't know. I don't know what I. It's I all right. Know. It's God's health. It is right. manly health. Yes, Man oh, manly. Your HP. In, in Gar's personal instance. I need a D8 to roll hit points. Me. I love rolling for hit points. Hit I'm points. too much of a coward. Pretty little hit points. Ooh, I can Got an eight, motherfucker. How do I upskill the character it. level <laughs> in D&D &D Beyond? Uh, if you go into, um... I'm in the Builder into... and in class at the moment. Wait, no, that's not what I want to be. I want to be in my campaigns. I'm trying to decide, uh, do I want to level Rangel, Rain, Rangel, Ranger from in the 4 to 5 or Rogue from 2 to 3? Mm. Uh, yes. Ooh, uh, that that gives help, you the yeah. access to the subclass features for getting to level 3. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you just let me know, actually, I can uh, I can manually do it for you if you'd like. Oh, that would be amazing, because I'm looking at this, I'm like, I'm not really sure how to do this. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, um, level five let's let's catch Rogue get, up. Oh. Level 5 Ranger, you get second attack. And you get third levels or second level spells. Oh. Level three rogue is when you get your uh, uh, archetype though, and extra die a sneak. Hmm. You're not making this easier they're, for me. I was gonna say they're they're both good. Well, while everyone's going over that, I will say that for my seventh level of paladin, I uh, get a sacred oath feature, which in my case is the aura of the guardian. I can shield my allies at the cost of my own health. When a creature within 10 feet of me takes damage, I may use my reaction to magically take that damage to the creature. I don't take any of the effects, but I do take away all the damage. You just became very, very useful. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, the the aura of protection wasn't useful enough because that was plus four to all your uh, saves. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Take my damage instead. Yeah, Carl, <laughs> do it. Oh, I think the last time what I did was I updated Ranger because that was my main one, mm -hmm. and then I was going to alternate between the two. So I think I'll. Uh, Dude, rogue to level rogue? three. All right. Oh, level three rogue is so juicy. Do you know what kind of rogue you would like to be? Uh, there's one that's really good at killing. There's one that does a little bit of extra magic. Uh, there's one that's really good at thieving. Uh, there is one that's kind of like a pirate. Um, there is one that's uh, really good at looking at minor details. Uh, there's the one that Lamalfame used to be, which was you get Psychic Blades. Uh, there's one that's called a Mastermind, so you kind of, like, can move. You, the other people in your party are, like, chess pieces. Uh, or there is the Scout, meaning you're really good, like, doing scouty elf stuff. Scout seems appropriate for Yune's background. That or the I, noticing details. I would agree. Scout's really good. Scary, scary uh, dudes. So, the two new things you get with that for being a scout is uh, you can move up to half your speed as reaction when an enemy ends their turn within five feet of you and does not provoke an opportunity attack. So, really good for an archer. If someone tries to get up close with you, you can just be like, nope, and move away. <laughs> but this, and they, I'm out. And, and they don't get to attack Sorry. you. Uh, and you also gain an extra proficiency. Uh, oh, and you get double proficiency bonus for nature and survival checks. Whoa. 
I don't even know how to put that on the sheet. Uh, it'll automatically do it. Oh, okay. Oh, sweet. Thank yep, you, D and D Beyond, for being super cool. That is, yep, that is the cool thing about D and D Beyond. Thank you, D and D Beyond. Uh, let's do that one. Okay, that's all good. And then, uh, then what you'll need to do is uh, roll a D eight. Alrighty. Sing head die. Omg. That'll be your Same. new winning. Total hit, hit, hit points. You got me. Noise. Yeah, eight club. Woo! You now have a total of sixty-four hit points. Yes. Way better than my rolls from yesterday. <laughs> uh, I just say so. We should yesterday? go to the character sheet. It should be all good to go here. My poor beastkin in Pathfinder yesterday couldn't it get is. a good roll to save his life. I feel yep. for you. So you now have a plus 10 to survival checks uh, and a plus 6 to nature checks. Yes. All right. Hine is good to go. Uh, Gar went over what he got. Uh, uh, Devok, what do you get on your level up? Well, let me tell you, I get a little, it's a small little thing here that I've been trying to get ever since we started this game. It's called <laughs> War Magic. Oh. Uh, beginning at 7th level, which we are currently, thank the lords. When you use your action to cast a cantrip, you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action. So that brings me up to cantrip... Attack, attack, modus action, attack. And that's not nice. bad. That is not hey. bad at all. Dope. And I also get second level spell slots. Ignore that, it's fine. Hey yo! <laughs> second level spell slots Please. always good. Speaking uh, of spells. Yes. Do tell. Do you mind if I wait until later in the week to message you about the spells I would like? That is absolutely <laughs> fine. Okay. Bless you. Um, uh, do you do you get anything? Do you get anything else on your level up, Bernie? Uh, I get ten HP, one spell known, no need to eat, sleep, or breathe, and once per turn I can do necrotic damage instead, plus an extra die if it's in form of dread. That's right. We said that. Uh, okay, and then uh, Keems, what about you? What is uh, yeah. Cyanide getting? So nothing super crazy. I finally get a fourth level uh, spell slot. That's my first. Um, I also get, as a part of my death domain spells, I get blight and inflect susceptibility as well um, as two spells that's always prepared. And aside from that, I got another hit dice, so I'm a little beefier too. Nice. Yeah. It's susceptibility. What the hell does inflict susceptibility do? Let's find out together. One second. It's actually here. I love making people susceptible to things. Let's see. I love to exploit a vulnerability, just speaking personally. Inflict susceptibility is a fourth level necromancy spell. Um and casting time is one action range is 120 feet um concentration spell and i get to choose one creature i can see within range the creature must cons must succeed on a constitution saving throw for which any advantage is has is negated okay on a failure the target has disadvantage on all saving throws for the duration this effect counts as a curse that's mean What's the duration on this? Um, it's a concentration, so up Ooh. to one minute. Brutal. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and that's it for Sayana. All righty. Uh, Devox slash John, I have rolled a... Uh, what I did was took a uh, alphabet die I have, rolled on it, got a letter, and then rolled... Uh, on a number on that, count it down, and that is the magic the magic item you got, and uh, I messaged to you what it is. All right, excellent, thank you. Juicy. 
Uh, I think that just leaves Lamalfoon, which we are actually going to rebuild. Huzzah! <laughs> rebuild number three! <laughs> can we build it? Easily. Yes, we can. Sorry. Easily. <laughs> Uh, and yes, and I have been side chatting. <clears throat> Patty, uh, I am building uh, the new and improved old Lamalthoon <clears throat> um, in D and D Beyond. I am currently just picking spells. Other than that, he is built. He is four level wizard blade singer, three levels fighter psy warrior. Oh. Which so me, will make no this. sense when this all comes together, which I love, because mechanically <laughs> these do not go together very well, or levels. but that's what I like. <laughs> Characters that don't make any sense. Uh, uh, fighter... Three levels... Okay... Uh, what fighting style would you like for your fighter? Um, fighting style is going to be dueling. Okay. And you are a come on, a psi warrior. Okay, that's all good there. Okay, that's good. That's good. Nothing else to pick there. Uh, okay, and then. Blade singing. Uh, what one-handed we melee weapon would you like proficiency in? Um, well, I already have proficiency in everything as a fighter. Oh yeah, from being an elf, or yeah, being a fighter. All right, so you D and D Beyond's making you pick one. What would you like me to pick? Rapier. You? Uh. Uh, that's not on here. So we'll just put, uh, Longsword. Long, long sword. Because why not? Put long sword. I could, uh, I could see Lamalthin with, like, scimitars. Actually, a scimitar would be kind of badass. Um. Okay, Drizzed. You don't know me. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> the best part is I had no idea that those were the weapons. Oh, yeah. Drizzed is scimitars, yeah. Oh, uh, that's why I stick with rapiers. What uh, what ASI are you taking? Um, um. want intelligence. You crave intelligence. <laughs> well, then isn't he supposed to be military, like in like thinking military, as opposed to just like fighting military? Uh, somewhat, yes. Yes. Um, but I was trying to think, was there a feat that I needed? Both your feet, typically. You could do something Dang. like... Uh, <laughs> there's Mage Sentinel. Slayer. Could aim for Mage, dual wielding. Mage Although Slayer. Mage Slayer is delicious. Mage uh, Slayer is so good. Sentinel is so... Mm, oh, Sentinel, mm. Sentinel's busted. Sentinel is like... <laughs> is like busted. I feel like an asshole... Every time I take Sentinel, because I take it. For those who don't know, for those who don't know, S Sentinel, when Sentinel... you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, their speed becomes zero. So when the mage tries to run away from your melee character, you just go, no. Uh, <laughs> creatures provoke opportunity attacks from you, even when they take the disengage action. Uh, and when a creature within a fight of feet for you makes an attack against a target other than you, you get to use your reaction to attack them. Can I? Can Does I? Does that reaction you? attack count as an opportunity attack? For the purposes of this uh, game? No, no, it does not. Can I also interest you in polearm master? <clears throat> uh, that would be good if he was not doing dueling style. Yeah, right. that's an insane feat as well. Yes. Um, dang. You know, you could get a proficiency in like athletics and swimming and whatnot consider we are going to be on a boat uh there's also the okay. asshole about there's also the asshole feet of mobile that a might be my fantastic. favorite that might be my least favorite feat a player takes against me 
against um, you. I thought we yeah. were collaboratively no. telling no. a story here. I just, uh, just want to point out. Um, oh, unless, you take mobile, unless you take mobile, and then I murder you. <laughs> so there is, in a private game, there is a player who takes mobile every time. And that character has died in every game. <laughs> so, and they're like it's the only character that's valid. died. <laughs> it's perfectly valid. They're the only character who's died. Keems, were you raising your hand a second ago? It wasn't no, on purpose. Just wiping the sweat off my brow. <laughs> Don't take Mogul. Got it. <laughs> to be fair, they died of their own volition. But yeah, they're the only character that died. It's a setup. <clears throat> All right. Um. All right, I have an 18 dex and a 17 intelligence with the swap around moving from rogue to uh, wizard. So, um, I don't think the plus one's going to help too much. I would rather take, you know what? Let me, um, let me reread, um, is it mage killer? Mage slayer? Mage slayer. Mage slayer. Yeah, read me mage slayer. <clears throat> When a creature within five feet of you casts a spell, you can use your reaction to melee attack them. When you damage a creature concentrating on a spell, they have disadvantage to, to maintain concentration. And you have advantage on saving throws of spells cast within five feet of you. Touch attacks. Really just don't do it to you anymore. I'm going to say, going with the role, like going with the idea of Lamalthoon. Actually, I'm gonna go Mage Slayer over Sentinel. Um, I like it since he's you know he he doesn't yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> what I skill proficiencies a... are you taking from Wizard? Which what where who uh, what? What skill proficiencies are you taking for Wizard? Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, Religion. Big Dad has some suggestions too, by the way. Okay. He says Shield Master is great. And he says, you've never had a paladin with shield master attack, knockdown, advantage, plus smite? Uh, that's kind of close to Gar. He Did you take shield yeah. master, Gar? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. We do have a paladin with shield master, it turns <laughs> but out. Our, our paladin uses it more defensively than offensively. 100% defensively. I have uh... tried to shield bash. I just failed. <laughs> Probably for the Malthoon in sight and investigation, right? Okay. Uh, why did I end up... How did this... Okay, I built this and ended up with athletics, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, and religion. Okay, perfect. That's two of those. Let's, two of those are on the list. Uh, then what's your HP? 50. 50. Oh my god, you're squishy. Yes. You're squishier uh, than me. <laughs> what are your what are your stats across the board? Uh 10, 18, 14, 17, 12, 14. 10, 18, 14, 17, 12. What was the last one? 14. Okay. <laughs> Still a soldier background, yeah. Yeath. Yep. Which is why Yeath. I'm proficient in athletics. Yep. Yep, and intimidation. Okay, keep them in the same. Your character sheet. Uh, and your character in our campaign should be up to date now. Word up. Word up. <laughs> I say, All right. I say word up too much for now to get turned into bird up in my head. No. <laughs> yes. Bird up. Bird up. Bird up. It's when Birdie's about to join a game. You bird up. <laughs> well, right now, I'm, I'm shifting into the zone of a very rude, impatient person. Uh, is, it, is it ironic that a bird is playing oh a cat? God. Yes. Which bolt are we talking about? It's me, Keems, with the gifts. Oh. I earned a subscription, Dad. Bird up. Oh, thank you. Kaka. 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 Bird up. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, is everyone all leveled up to number seven? Yep. Just gotta get Let's do this. Spells. Just gotta get my spells, and I'm good to go. So, continue without me. Alrighty. Fantastic. She's fireball. 
<laughs> I mean, fireballs never incorrect answer. <clears throat> you ever fought? Okay. A you ever fought a fighter that can throw fireball? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, now you have. Pitbull. Ah! Every uh, time he sings fire fireball. Uh, perfect. Okay. Yes. So, uh, you have been teleported uh, to the city of Rahak. Uh, and the city is actually kind of uh, split between an, a higher and lower part of the city, uh, separated by some cliffs. Uh, the higher part uh, is um, kind of this constantly moving lifts and ramps that are transporting goods from that are brought in from the ships into the harbor up to the main part of the city, the part you're currently in right now, to then be transported into the hegemony. So there's just numerous hundreds of uh, lifts and levers and pulleys uh, and ramps and things ranging from the size of something that could pick up, you know, a bucket or two to things that could uh, lift livestock. Um, so it's just this whirling, twirling kind of uh, fantastical sight to watch. Um, and you, and it's just kind of this beautiful look down from above, down below to watch everything happening. Numerous, numerous ships uh, flying all kinds of different colors, actually. Um, Rahak is uh, kind of a semi-free city-state uh, where they are in the lands of the hegemony and they are dev devoted to Verduk um, but in order to maintain trade in the hegemony uh, they allow just about anybody to use these ports um, the city itself is devoted uh, to Manui the goddess of the sea uh, which you know is kind of a political maneuver as uh, you want to keep the goddess of the sea happy as you are a seaport town. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you go around saying your city is, is it belongs to Manoli because, you know, they're uh, a divine goddess of the sea, good aligned. So what's, what's the hurt that could come from that? <clears throat> the navigator is the one who greeted you coming out of the teleportation. And once again, just to kind of give you a visualization of what he looks like. Uh, he has one ram style horn uh, with that has numerous cracks all in it. And they look uh, like uh, fissures in the land that go through his uh, his horn, but it's still main, it is still in one piece. Uh, one of his arms is bright blue uh, that have scales all along it uh, that seem to actually um, ripple at, with it while in, in time with his breathing uh, on the opposite side from that blue arm he has one cloven foot uh, and I say these things the, like his other arm is uh, a normal humanoid style arm his other foot is a normal humanoid style foot oh um, I thought we were talking about one legged dude at the end of the last time we played well so he stands as if someone who has two legs uh, but only one seems visible. Oh. Uh, and it is Clover. Ghost leg? Ghost leg. And he has mm -hmm. a, uh, a tiefling style tail uh, that pokes out uh, from underneath. Also blue. Uh, uh, yes, also blue. Uh, and he can introduce himself as a navigator. He takes uh, kind of stock of your group, looks at all of you lingers on each one of your faces just for a second or two. And he's just like, you are not the weirdest group I've seen today, but up there. Like I said, you are the last ones here, so please let us go down to uh, the city proper. Take in the sea air and board, board your ship. He leads Gee. you down. Oh, go ahead. Oh no! So, so you said we weren't the <coughs> weirdest group? Wow. Okay. All right. I mean, that's impressive in its own right. Yes. Believe it or not, uh, I have seen more more interesting today. 
That's kind of insulting. Okay, all right, moving on. <laughs> Gar's just gonna say, how how many groups were there again? Uh, there are five others. Just because Gar didn't know why he creepily smiled after he said all six of us, and Gar was like, "Was I wrong?" Okay. <clears throat> uh, there are five others. So uh, six t- groups, yes. All yes. six groups of us. Yeah. Uh, he leads you uh, through kind of this, uh, this top part of the city uh, to some of the ramps that are stationary that allow for uh, uh, travel from the top part of the city down to the bottom part of the city. Uh, and as you're walking, uh, he kind of uh, is talking out loud uh, to all of you. Uh, the king in his wisdom, has told different groups different amounts of information, so I do not know uh, what you know. But uh, you will be setting sail tomorrow uh, with these other groups. You'll be working together to locate an island. The Drifting Isle. I do not long. I do not know how long we'll be at sea. I do not know how long it'll take to find it. Uh, but uh, apparently, all of you were best for the job. Yes. You are the navigator, correct? That is I. Is it not your job to navigate us to the island? <clears throat> Son, we're looking for something called the Drifting Isle. Mm, yes. Have you tried locating anything in an ocean? No, I come from underneath the mountains. However, ah. counterpoint, my name is not the Navigator. Correct, my name is the Navigator. It is not the knower of exact locations. I believe that's the definition of Navigator. You'd be incorrect. A navigator is someone who sets course, guides, leads. So set a course to the island? <clears throat> this leads me into my next point. <laughs> I am the ultimate authority. You all will be working together with the other groups. There will be no killing. There will be no maiming. There will be no injury accidental or otherwise. To help with this, during the day, we will be sailing in separate ships. But at night, for safety, the ships will come together as one. You may be tempted to interfere with the other groups if you do not get along with them, which, by judging from the other groups I've met, it is very likely that not all groups will find that they want to work together. However, anyone, and I do mean anyone, who breaks my rules, let's just say there is a devil in Dis that owes me quite many favors, and uh, you'll be spending some time with him. Do I make myself clear? Or just stares at the Malthoon. I need to see nods from everybody. Yine is is nodding vigorously. (laughs) Ashok kind of shoulders past the Malthoon on the way to address this this guy. Pulls up. I will see to it that we behave to the best of our ability. Okay. Then he stares at the Malthoon, the, the troublemaker already. I need to see a nod that you understand. Hypothetically speaking. Sure. Wait, is this out this of character? Is, this is in character. In character. Oh, like, okay, okay. Hypothetically speaking, you said accidental maiming or injury. Mm-hmm. I do know that sailing is quite a hazardous occupation. So if one's yeah, hand... No. 
I, I raise a hand in front of Lamalthun real quick just to see if this if you might go along with what I'm saying here. <laughs> what my compatriot means to say is he is concerned for our involvement in the sailing itself. Surely, if we are not to be working the rigging, there will be no accidents. He looks at all of you and he's just like, you were very obviously not sailors in these. And he points out towards where the ships are that are flying uh, the king colors that are kind of all together. And those are obviously very large ships to be crewed just by the six of you. And I am very glad that I saw Fords because you all clearly do not understand how ships work. There will be a crew for each ship. Captain, since you are the captain of this voyage. Uh, that is not necessary. Just call me the navigator. I intend to work alongside you to the extent of the capacity that you will it. I was, in fact, assistant to some sailors on my trip over to this continent. Our navigator was eaten by a kraken. I replaced him. Mm. That said, do not insult my friends. I will I send was you to that insulting. devil myself. I was, I was simply stating fact. No insult intended. The misunderstanding is forgiven. Uh, I think we're all one big happy go lucky go find this mysterious artifact people now, right? Yeah, we cool. will be Let's as go. soon yeah. as I see a nod from your friend. Oh, you might be waiting for a while on that one. He's a very stubborn individual. Cyanus is going to put a hand on the top of Lamalthun's head, and she's <laughs> just going to try to push it down. See if you know. <laughs> I am not stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is our comedy routine. You <laughs> see how well we're entertained on Long Voyages. Patty. <laughs> yes. Actually, I, I should ask for Steven. Do you mind I, if I utilize the staff? I, I am once I do that line, I'm gonna let Sayana <laughs> nod my head. So excellent. Wonderful. This is good. The previous group, I had to actually send them to disc momentarily for them to get the message to sink in. So I'm glad I did not have to do that today for you. All right. And he continues leading you. You are now in the bottom part uh, of uh, the city. Uh and uh, it's just constant movement as people are uh, moving goods and other items off of the ships to be loaded up onto these lifts. Like, it's one of those, you're kind of like trying to get out of people's way, but as you do, you're just getting in other people's way. Like, there, it's just one of those things you would have to live here and be here constantly to get the ebb and flow of movement of where this place is uh, and how it works. Uh, so you bump, you bump over a couple people. There's some swearing as you know you've disrupted, uh, you know their work, things like that. But able to finally push through that part uh, of the city as you are now kind of on the docks formally. And uh, he uh, he kind of motions over to the boats. He's like, and these are the ships you all will be sailing on. Uh. We will, you will be meeting all the all of you will be meeting each other and meeting the other crews uh, shortly. Uh, I will actually go get them now. If you will wait here for me, please. And he kind of indicates like the fourth ship in line. He's like, "This one will be yours. Feel free to name it whatever you would like, and I will be back with the other crews." And he uh, walks away and kind of goes down to the first ship in the line walks up the gangplank and starts talking to some people I and mean, he kind of however long whatever you guys want to talk about there in this time he you what you can as you are left alone we should name it the broad reacher sure good name good name um um divine's folly mm. Mm. while people are talking about names 
I'm, I'm going to very gently put my hand on Lamalthun's shoulder and just motion him away from the rest of the group. Like, come here for a sec. Uh, yeah, we can go elsewhere. Just step a couple and, feet away. Yeah, yeah, you guys about ten feet away <clears> from the rest of the group because they have a lively debate over the ship's name. <laughs> and they kind of yes. hunch in over and toward him and say, uh, I understand your frustrations with these people all too well. But I would like to ask you to hone your tact when dealing with them. Not for my sake or for theirs, but for the sake of an advantage later down the line. The element of surprise is something you are no doubt familiar with. If it becomes the case that we cannot ally with these people, we will do things your way. But for the time being, help me keep appearances. Yes? I can play nice when needed. Thank you. I need you to do this. I need you to do this because you are the only one who understands on that level what it means, you know. Shepard, then. I cannot do it alone. Hmm. We'll see. They step back over to the group. The wild goose. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Bird up. Don't look like up. Oh, that thing pasty. Pasty. <laughs> the wild goose pasty. Ooh, what? Goose Why the pasty? wild Sounds goose? Good. It sounds delicious. That sounds because we're delicious. searching for a floating island. It might as well be a wild goose chase. Well, no, it's an island, not a goose. I mean, I thought I thought Lamalthun would be on on board for my first name, but here we are. Well, I, I'm I sorry, thought the Devon, name that I... I had picked out. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Lamalthun. Oh no, I apologize. I was really saying, I'm sorry, Devaka. I just was a little distracted. What did you say again? Oh, 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 I didn't actually think you were going to... Okay, Divine's Folly. Divine's Folly. I would Maybe it would not be nose. best to insult the gods on a floating ship. It's a bit on the nose. You know? The last ship that I rode on in order to get to, get to this continent hmm. was named Blessed of the Sea for perhaps the exact opposite intent. And I heard it there may was be. Kraken. What was the name of that uh, god this port was supposed to be for? <laughs> uh, Ma- Manawi. <laughs> the shot starts cracking the fuck up. Because <laughs> I'm cracking the fuck up. <laughs> there was a cracking, didn't you know? Yes. I assume it would have been worse going over the Blood Sea with no navigator. The if Kraken... it were not named that. I mean. A cracking or sure a cracking it? Give a fuck about us. Name it the Steve Manamami. <sighs> I will go with whatever it is that you all decide would be the best name. For <clears throat> our hair, it could be called Ship. The best name. How about the, the Divine's Faithful? Uh, Shipwright? I know. Right, it's ship. funny, isn't it? We could name it Betty. What's a what's a what's a different word for uh, a forward word for ship? Does anybody know? Vessel. No, no, like a literal foreign word. Does anybody know a like a, 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 a the Elvish word I, for ship? Yes. So you're I, gonna name the ship ship. That's an incredibly great joke, I guess. Bodie McBoatface yes, strikes again! Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> Australia, uh, I'm sorry, Australis Plays says the Titanic, of course. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> the Lusitania. No. Oh, we're not gonna do In French, it would be Bateau. Betty, I, then. You know what, there we go, I like ba- so I Bateau. So it's a Bateau ship? No, it's just Bateau, that's the name, Bateau. I'm going to go back to yes, ship but... listening to this. Battleship and 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 you 
Did bateau mean ship? So you'd be naming it ship ship. Yeah, so that's the joke. At this point, the navigator walks up the third <laughs> ship, uh, coming out from the, coming out from the first two ships. Uh, the first ship has um, the uh, they're all very clearly wearing the armor, the sigils uh, of the Black Dragoons. Um, this seems to be the uh, per personal squad of dragoons that uh, uh, Verduk had sent, and you you all knew about that one. Could you say that it's the goon squad? Uh, sure. Sure. I, just, I, I, I gotta interrupt you, Patty, because, you know, for, for one, giving the group the ability to name a ship, you knew this was gonna derail quickly. Oh, absolutely. And you just bought yourself <laughs> an hour of, like, DM planning time, but I gotta call out LXU over here with Batu Ship McBatu Ship Face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if it if it gets you back, <coughs> we can say you sunk my bateau ship. Okay, all right. You were saying important information, what? Uh, Mr. Patrick. Okay, I was not uh, aware that we put ship after the name name of everything. So like the Queen's Anne's Revenge ship. No, just bateau uh, ship because it makes it sound like battleship. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. You know what? That's perfect. Bateau ship. You know what? I'm on board. I'm I'm there 100. <laughs> percent I would like to propose a name as well. You've fallen far from Absolutely. Grace. <laughs> so. Far. Oh, I w I was never in Grace. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna be in Betty though if we then, needed that. Then let that be the name of the ship. <laughs> far from Grace. Oh my God. Uh, you know what? That's fitting. oddly apt for our group. <laughs> it's fitting. It's topical. I like it. Let's do it. I, I am all for it. Lima. What? What? What is? What, that's a lot of long words. It's three short words. Sounds Ilitarina like Lima. one long word. <laughs> it is a Leonin phrase meaning fortune at sea. Mm. I like it very well. I do. I, I like it. I, th I believe we have two very... And then only to Yane, I lean over and I whisper, it means boat of the water. <laughs> so I see we have one serious name and two not so much. Yane will just double over laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? I didn't think I was... Oh, Man, no, I'm, you're, I'm, I'm you're hilarious. I'm funnier than I thought I was. Damn. Yeah, you you're find good. Poetic. I understand. I like oh. boat of the water. <laughs> you know, let's do it. I'm what good. did you say it was? Ili Tarina Lima. Ili <laughs> Tarina Lima. I like All it. right. Coming out of the second ship, uh, are uh, several figures that look uh, similar to Cyan. They are hollow, hollow legionnaires. <clears throat> Isabella. However, they, sorry. sorry. However, they all uh, have the colors proudly displayed on them of Corian. Of course. And they are very militaristic walking down the ramp uh, and line up uh, parade style in front of their ship. Question. Are the colors of Corian any different from the colors of the Iron Order? Uh, no. 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 I... They would be the same. <laughs> the Iron Order might, like, put their own, like, flourish on there. Mm -hmm. um, but it'd be very similar. Good to know. Uh, as you finally settle on the name of, the, uh, of, the, of your ship, uh, coming down the, th the third ramp uh, is uh, a bunch of similarly dressed people. Um, people from Gelspad may give me a history check to see if they recognize the colors of these people. They all are wearing uh, robes and uh, kind of uh, uh, monk-style wrappings that are uh, orange and yellow. 
and they are all bald. Does anyone want to give me a history check? Yes. Yes, I yes, I want to. Yeah, no, I, I'm... Okay. <laughs> Sure. Don't know nothing. I will. I will attempt a history check. Thirteen. All right. I also got a nat one. Okay, nat one, nat one, thirteen. 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 Okay. None of you are quite sure who these people are. Uh, then you guys are on the fourth ship, uh, and as the navigator is walking down the ramp with the uh, monk-looking uh, people from the third ship. You're the fourth ship. Out of the fifth ship comes, and Pajat, you're, you know, you can react as however you want. I am uh, not com- looking at her. Comes Acadia, the mirror mage. Uh, and coming and following her is a very interesting assortment of creatures. Uh, first is a uh, bugbear and a uh, goblin. Uh, the goblin is pure red, though, and looks almost like an imp or something. Like, a, like almost looks like a devil. And the bugbear, uh, it's usually completely hairy, covered body. the The head has been shaved, and it looks like it just has like a beard, mutton chop kind of mustache combination going on. Uh, and they're kind of. The the goblin has uh, chain uh, t- like two wrist chains that drag freely, so it has free motion of its hands, but it has the chains on it. Uh, and the bugbear uh, has this kind of ridiculous hunch going to it. Uh, and then behind them, walking upright on two legs and in full plate armor, is what something that looks suspiciously like an owl bear. Owlbear? Who? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah an owlbear. Uh, Is this, are we talking like size of an owlbear too? Yes. So the ship's going just a little bit. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, like the, the, the little the little ramp they're all walking down like bends horribly as it gets to the middle. Um, especially because it's in full plate. Uh, and strapped to its back is this just gigantic great axe. Huh. But as it gets off, you can see that it's wearing like the little glasses that sit right on the ridge of a nose. And it, like, t- and while it's just standing there at the end, it takes them off and kind of cleans them a little bit, puts them back on. Uh, Acadia, go pet it. Acadia actually starts to walk over to your group. And when she gets within comfortable, like, talking distance range, she'll just be like, Oh, hello. It is wonderful to see all of you again. I'm and I'm sincerely surprised you made it. Their mm. ear flicks over, but they're still not looking. Sir. I mean, I feel like you're being sarcastic on one hand, truthful on the other. Oh, you here oh, must be geez. the brains of the group. Congratulations. I, I really am. How'd you know? <clears throat> I'm sorry, what's happening right now? Uh, assholes being asshole. Hey, a- must say you have quite a... Uh... Hey, asshole, <laughs> would you like to be asshole? Mm, yes. The uh, wisdom of fools swears. Uh, I'm, I'm well, sorry. That's a great comeback. Fantastic. I I, my apologies. I was informed that there was no harming of one another upon the boats. And why why would I want to harm you? Well, you're you're here. It's uh, harming my And also you seem evil. Harming my (laughs) calm. Devon openly laughs at that. (laughs) Harming my (laughs) calm. Pajat, Pajat, darling, you keep an interesting company. Uh... I can see why you surround yourself with these fellows. 
out of character. We have no real context of this relationship as characters, nope. right? Nope. Now, is it obvious, like, your body language, Pazat, that this is, like, uncomfortable for you? I would say it probably reads as just decidedly ignoring. Like, they're very strict with their body language, so it's like shoulders back, head squared, looking out at the ocean. But not nothing betrayed on the face. Okay. So I have a question. Um, why are you here? Well, the king wanted to hire the no, best. No, I mean, I mean, here in this portion of the dock, and talking to us. I just simply wanted to say hello. We were told that we would be meeting all of the groups here, as I, as I assume you were also told that. And uh, just figure I get a head start. I am looking oh, forward okay, to spending do so much don't, quality don't, time don't do with Pajat. Yes, yes, and we're all idiots and assholes, according to you. Thank you. Those are just your words. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, as always, I am overwhelmed by your friends. Cannot wait for this journey to begin. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just still incredibly confused. Who the fuck are you? This is, this is me. This is not Pajat. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> she'll just, she'll just turn away and kind of like very lightly just kind of, <laughs> and as she does that, like two copies of her come out and like in step, like start walking behind her as well. And then <laughs> they all merge back together again. She's a pain in the ass that apparently comes in triples. Once three faced. Once triples. <laughs> She's, she's clearly out of earshot, I'm going to, to turn to the rest of them and just like, since you asked, what just happened there was an attempt at hazing. Acadia is insecure and operates best when you are on the back foot. And it was an attempt to make you angry and it evidently worked. Try practicing what I was doing. She does not operate well if you ignore her. <clears throat> The navigator will pass your group, will pass Acadia's group, seeing they're already assembled down, and we'll go to the last ship and walk up its gangplank. We should go join the other groups before the navigator returns. If we go alongside him, we will look dependent. Keep your cool. Is that All right, after yeah. everyone, let's go. Is, uh, reading the room. It's good to make a first impression with people like these, particularly when the stakes are high. So we want to be walking a little bit behind him, is what you're saying? No, ahead of. We ahead. should go now. Ahead, I guess, of course. And everyone, like, like Pazat said, walk cool. Keep it cool. I'm not hot. Sure, you know, uh, side to uh, sidewalk. I'm gonna need charisma checks <laughs> all of you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hell I'm yeah. the best out of all of us for this. Oh god. Not joking. I want charisma. I want to see your guys' slow mo <laughs> superhero walk. Don't do May see I you, see if you impress any of these other groups? I May rolled I a 19 with my plus four. May I utilize uh, not uh, intimidation instead of charisma for this one? Because I'm sure. trying to look hard as hell. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Seventeen. I got a twenty-two. Okay. All right. So twenty-three, twenty-two, nineteen. Oh yeah. So three, three of your group looks badass AF. Twenty-two. 16. Oh wait, no, I have advantage on. It. I'm spending. I'm spending advantage on this. I have so many fucking points of that. Sure. What'd you get? What'd you get, Martin? Twenty-two. Okay. Tavak and Yune. Seventeen. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, just... 16. 16? Okay. Uh, I think I'll... I think I'll, uh... Start mine with a, uh, natural 20, if you please. I do! Okay. Oh, I do, You please. guys all I look please. hella badass. In fact, like, there's this perfect moment where, like, uh... A, uh, a wave actually comes up through the dock, splashes against the side where you guys are walking, spraying perfectly behind all of you. The sun peeks out from behind the cloud at <laughs> the perfect moment. And there's just this like anime moment where the sun hits the droplets of water that splashed up against the side of the docks. And you all just immediately like strike like different poses at the same time. And oh, yeah. It's pretty badass. Is it? We are fucking JoJo's right now, baby. Hell right. yeah. I'm drawing this. Uh, everybody DM me what your poses are. <laughs> I just pictured, like, the Mystery Men walk, but we actually did cool. Uh, I'm kind of picking a... I'm, I'm picturing, personally, a Ginyu Force kind of pose. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um so you guys make your way over to the closest group, which would be the group none of you recognized, uh, the monks. Um, and by this time, as you start walking over to them, uh, the navigator is walking down the last ship um, with a very wide assortment of people. Uh, there's big, little, female, male, one, you know, highly armored, no armor. It's just a wide assortment of people. Uh, and he has them follow and then picks up Acadia's group and you kind of are all meeting in the middle where you and the monks are going to meet. So quite, before everyone gets there, you guys do have a brief moment to interact with these monks if you would like. After y'all did your totally badass superhero walk. I'm going to say good afternoon and that's it. Uh, the nearest uh, uh, and as you get close they actually all look um, very similar um, you can't really tell age, gender, anything from these people, they all uh, you know, have shaved heads um, no, 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 no like, kind of defining, like there's no piercings no tattoos, no makeup or anything kind of discerning facial differences um, they're all dressed very similar uh, very neutrally uh, but however the uh, the nearest one, as you say that, just kind of turns and looks at you and just kind of bows their head slightly at you. I'm going to stand in the circle and I'm not going to say anything else. Does anyone else try to engage with these monks? I, I give them a natural 20 head nod. And then just stand there like a badass. Okay. To be clear, you said JoJo pose. Oh yeah, hell yeah. So you're like this kind of badass. Oh yeah, I mean, as flamboyant as absolutely possible. We need to get you a cape. Fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I will uh, greet the monks. I also give you a head nod. Where might you I be from? Be right back. They just kind of stare at you and give you like a like a half smile, and then they kind of do, do this motion. Uh, would I be able to now? Getting a little extra. You know if there's any religious order or anything where they do vows of silence. You can give me another. You can give me a. Uh, you can give me a religion check. No, as right. opposed to a history check. Uh, that's uh, 18. Nice. 18, okay. Yeah, that, that's enough. Uh, there is an order uh, of uh, uh, an order of monks uh, from uh, the uh, northern areas of the northern, northern mountains um, near the Canyon of Souls uh, called the Otanazu. They are they are the silent wind walkers. Uh, they uh, have taken vows of silence. Uh, it it's kind of a practical thing. Um, the way the wind moves 
uh, through the from, through their area is just so constantly loud, no one would be able to hear each other anyway trying to talk. Um, they're the only people crazy enough to live there as they have trained their minds to uh, block out the sound of the wind. Uh, and wind walkers is not a misnomer. They have developed a technique of harnessing air energy uh, in the elemental plane of air to essentially fly. Dope! That's tight as hell. That is pretty awesome. Uh, upon realizing who they are, Gar will just, oh, my apologies. And then, and then, then they, give you, they, they give you a full smile at that upon your recognition. They just... And they actually kind of, uh, the one uh, that had been kind of nodding at all of you, just kind of whips their hands together and they take the air and the like particulates in the air and they actually make it so it's kind of like a shimmering almost like how a mirage looks uh when you look at the road from a, it's really hot outside and you kind of see you know the shimmering air same thing he kind of summons it in his hand uh into uh, a flower and then it disappears when he stops focusing on it and then bows at you uh so at this point uh um go ahead i was gonna i was going to say <laughs> i'll uh I'll, I'll walk up to the to one to, to 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 them collectively just be like you know i'm something of a monk myself <laughs> is that your pickup line <laughs> the, they just they just look at you like give it kind of give me like the go on um Obviously, I've not studied with your order, but I did spend time with monasteries in order to develop this to work more in line with everything else. So, good luck to you. The lead one kind of not, the one that's kind of been reacting, kind of nods, then just goes. Is that is that a greeting? Can I, can, I, can I try and find out what is that? Uh, you you can. It's easy enough to pick up what they're trying to say. Malthun was like, "Oh, you know, I, I I've trained this," and they were saying this and this together, right? So kind of mind and spirit together. They know thieves can't to speak in Beautiful. in in a way that doesn't require a voice. Uh, less thieves can't. Cause that's more thieves can't. Kind of think of it as like, uh, um, like when you are speaking in code, uh, where you're oh. like, oh, you know, went to go see gran grandma, you know, grandma Cecil the other day. Uh, had to pick up a, uh, uh, you know, a gardening tool from her, which would translate to like, had to go see uh, my brother guildmate to pick up uh, that forge painting. Like that. That's kind of what <laughs> thieves can't is. Words within um, this, words. Yeah, this would be more like um, kind of a their own play on sign language. Mm. Um, you know, you so will that, just wave. They, they you know, they, they smile and nod their heads at you. Um, the uh, at this point, the navigator has has brought the uh, other two groups with him uh, from the ships, and. Uh, all, all six groups now stand kind of in this uh, loose huddle, and the navigator stands at the head of it. And uh, twenty people. Uh, let's see. <laughs> like just as they're approaching, Pajat's going to sweep their eyes over and count the exact number of how many people, and then divide them up into groups in their head. Uh, 25. Got it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem. The, uh, navigator stands, uh, kind of in the coach's position of the huddle. And, uh, gets ready to address you. But we'll have him address you after we come back from our break. No. Take a quick break. Oh, wow. We're it's halfway a, through. 
We yeah. are. It's 11.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be back at 11.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't go anywhere. Don't change the dial. We'll be right back.
<laughs> and welcome back to Scarred Lands, Draco Genesis Season 2, A Flight of Whimsy. <clears throat> the Navigator has gathered all six of the ship's crews together. The ones being selected by the king, uh, kind of up close and tight for this huddle, and then the respective kind of designated sailors that are going to be actually crewing and running the ship are behind all of you. The uh, the navigator looks at all of you. <clears throat> I'll say, I said it before to each group individually, but I'll say it to all of you again so there is no misunderstanding. We'll be traveling together for an unknown period of time. I get the sense that not all of you will get along or see eye to eye on your beliefs. This would not, I repeat, not be an excuse to hash out these disagreements with violence or even killings. There will be civility on these ships. We are going to be working together for those who do not cooperate with everyone else, the consequences will be dire. And he looks over <clears throat> at the last group of individuals he brought over and looks at one of them directly. And you see one of them actually kind of like shiver. What does this person look like? Uh, the person he looks at and the person who shivers uh, is this uh, kind of... Um, they look like they're clothing wise, they only have a loincloth on, but they have all of these tattoos over the over, on them that look lifelike. Uh, so lifelike that they actually move. And like they're all seem to be of different animals or beasts or monsters or things like that. And whatever's appropriate for them, they kind of do. Like they, some of them roar or some of them kind of, you know, walk up and down either the person's arm or leg. Uh, it looks like there's uh, kind of on the chest area, there's this large dragon's head. The dragon is, is asleep currently. Is it Titty's um, Outlook? <laughs> is it what? Is this a Titty's Outlook? This person is displaying oh. a, a Titty's Outlook. <laughs> yes, the, yeah, they're only wearing a loincloth. All right. Writing uh, that down. And uh, yeah, they shiver, and you actually see a couple mm. of the uh, tattoos kind of like, you know, uh, display typical, like, fear reactions. Uh, um, kind of lets his gaze linger on that person for a little bit, and then goes back to look, kind of addressing all of you. <clears throat> we will travel during the day as separate ships in a uh, travel formation. My my ship will be at the front. The rest of you will take a uh, formation behind me. At night, our ships will move closer together and be connected. This is for safety, as there are many creatures in the water that look to prey on small ships such as these, among them being keel crushers and dragon turtles. As a singular large entity, we will hopefully avoid this kind of attention. There's more information I will share with you once we get underway, but that needs to be said on the open water, not here where any ears can hear. I have entrusted sailors to each of your ships, they're not to be messed with. They're to be left alone. They are to be left to their duties of crewing the ship, navigating the ship under my ultimate command, and making sure the ship functions. You're not to interrupt these duties or to attempt to suggest different ways of doing their jobs. I assure you they are all professionals. I have handpicked them all. This will not be an easy trip. It will be very dangerous. The Blossoming Sea, while it does not get as 
rough of a time in its typing as the Blood Sea is not just a, is not just a cakewalk. It is very dangerous, especially as far in the open water as we plan to be going. Hmm. Any questions? I step forward uh, closer to him so only he and I can speak and quietly. I did want to ask a question. I did not want to be disrespectful. Since you offered, why during the day would we not be using a wider sweep formation? Lookouts on each of the crows' nests. I will explain when we set sail, but for now... It is not something what we're looking for is not something that a wide search pattern can help very well there's, very, there's a very specific way of finding our goal and I suppose we don't get to know what that is you will as soon as we set sail very well I am in the business of making sure we uh, get to our goal and secrets do not allow for that I'm not someone who tries to hide behind a mask of mystery as unique as I might look. That is just a side effect of doing the kind of travel I do. I understand. Any other questions? I step back in line with everybody else and huddle. All the groups kind of look at each other. I have no questions, but your use of the word crewing did make me just understand why the sport is called that. I've won board your ships. We shall set sail shortly. I legitimately never realized why the sport of crew was called crew. the groups kind of all start to file back to their ships. Uh, you see the navigator kind of go down, several ships down, uh, and there's a slightly smaller ship than yours flying no colors um, that he gets on. Hmm. Do you guys, do you guys board your ship? Yes. I'm going up to the captain. Yes. I'm asking, where on the ship can I be alone? And then I'm going there. As, as we start boarding up and Pajat just kind of takes off, I want to, like, just kind of go over to Akeem and Yanay and go, is our explosions using fire? Um, I've never explosions been on a ship fire, before. Explosions make fire, yes. Oh, you've never you've never been on a ship? This is also my first time on a ship. I think it would be good to let you know that I do not know how to swim. Do, do you need to, to breathe? Swim? No. Then you're fine. Your name? Yeah, you're a little bit oh, better off than I am. Stay close Gar to the rest. gestures to his full, pl full adamantine plate. Also, don't know how to swim? Wow, this is horrible. Out of character, uh, uh, um, God, what would we roll for swimming? I, yeah, I have no swim. <laughs> speed. Be an athlete. Be an athletics check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you if no. you don't if you don't if you don't have a swim speed, be an athletics check. Do I have a swim speed? No. Okay. You would not have a swim speed. Unless one. Wait, 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 wait. One of us has a cloak of the manta. I think that's Yane, actually. Okay. Yes, it is. Then you are fine. I think, I think Yine has a cloak of the manta, which does give you a swimming speed. You don't will... need to breathe. We'll and also lets you breathe underwater, I'm pretty sure. So, I have a helmet. You can swim. She looks to the back. Can you swim? Uh, no. I have a trident of speaking no. with fishes. Never tried. Does it let you, you breathe underwater? You can scream and tell them you're drowning as you're drowning. <laughs> yes. Whale, eat me! <laughs> and my suffering. <clears throat> All right. Uh, as you approach the captain uh, seeker, he just—they're uh, just kind of like the uh, crew quarters are 
underneath the ship. Uh, claim whichever one you want. I go there. Okay. Uh, the rest of you board the ship. You can kind of explore it freely if you want. Uh, there is the uh, main deck. Uh, it is a uh, double-masted ship. Uh, there is the captain's quarters kind of built as like this half uh, level on the top of the main deck that the wheel uh, the uh, the wheel is above. Uh, down below, uh, the first level uh, is all the crew quarters. The level down below that is uh, like where the sailors will be uh, sleeping in hammocks as well as storage for supplies and things like that. It's a very simple layout. Um, it's not like, you know, a piece of shit that's going to sink, you know, with, you know, one little uh, storm, but it's also not like, you know, this really huge, impressive galleon. Think like Black Pearl size from Pirates of the Caribbean. Damn. So the fastest ship in the sea. Got it. Looks like I got to watch You are movie. not the fastest ship in the sea. <laughs> Damn it. Is the navigator ship the fastest ship in the sea? <laughs> You have no idea. Could no I make an, a, uh, an educated guess as to whether or not it's the fastest ship in the, the sea? Uh, you, you take a look at it. it. It is built differently from all of yours, and it is smaller and therefore lighter. So it would be faster in all of your ships. So um, it's the fastest ship in the us. And, and your little fleet, yes, it is the fastest ship. You know what? That works for me. It's the fastest ship in the sea now. That's <laughs> all that fucking matters, right? As Until far as you know, as far as I fucking know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, you all uh, move into your crew quarters, uh, unpack your little bits of valuables you might have, um, kind of set up for you know, however long this trip may be, um, and are able to kind of freely move out the ship as you want. Uh, as uh, kind of evening sets in, the sun, the sun sets. It seems you'll be spending a night on the boat in port before launching first thing in the morning. I actually want to talk to Sienna before the night's out. That's all right. Sure. Yeah. Anything any of you'd like to do before going to bed, you may absolutely do it now. Uh, I'll go and just kind of not knock on their door. Yes. Uh, Hi, uh, it's Devok. May I... Do you have a moment? Uh, Cyan is going to open the door and um, kind of stand aside and let Devok in. Okay. I'm just, uh, assuming there's like a small chair I can sit in. Uh, just uh, Apologies, I know it's a little, getting getting a little bit late there. Um, it's fine. I don't sleep anyways. I did not know that. You do now. Excellent. See, we're getting to know each other already. Yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought. Excellent. Cool. What you, you're a, a a studier of the gods, yes? Perhaps. I like to know as much as I can about the gods, but I wouldn't say that I am a scholar. You would not say you are a scholar. Hmm. I was just wondering if it would actually, and I know some of our party fit, think I am foolish for offering gratitude or praise to gods, um, but I, I feel very grateful that I am alive and I attribute that to to a higher power in one way or the other. And so I give my gratitude. And you I would realize like to... that I worship a death god, right? Yes. Well, I mean, I would. I was actually wondering uh, your relationship with your death god, notwithstanding, if you knew of a seafaring god, I might offer my gratitude to. You are the only person I know that has shown interest in other gods. Um, Cyan is going to put her, her fingers to her chin and thought for a moment. And she's going to say, I believe the port town we just left, they worshipped a goddess by the name of mm, 
Menua? Menua? Menua. Menua. Hmm. I don't know that I've heard that name before. Well, I do. I do appreciate the time. And of you, course. so you worship your, you worship a death god. Vangal, yes. And how does that work? I am his tool. I go into the fields and I spill blood in his name. Hmm. And is it just the act of death that helps him? Is it your belief in him? Or is it the act of carrying out that belief? Van Gogh just wants to see the streets turn red. Um, he is not necessarily a god of... Some may think he is only a god of death, but I like to think he is a god of cleansing. So After saying... all... Oh, sorry. You can't begin anew if... There's still old things around, right? You're saying he's a god of change? More or less, yes. Of chaos. I prefer change. I like this. If you find anything new or interesting, let me know. I am always open to conversations about you know, deities and gods. They're you know, there are, it does strike my fancy, but as you know, I can't talk with it about with Lamalfo, and he scoffs at the mere mention, and he he stifles any sort of conversation you can have about. It. Yes, that does any sound like Lamalfo, doesn't it? Yes, it is quite annoying. I apologize. Uh, I am going to uh, go back to my quarters now. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, your time. Enjoy your respite. And he takes his leave. Okay. And Gar is just gonna go to the top of the ship and form a short prayer to Ankili for good winds and a safe travel. And he will explicitly set his uh, spear aside while doing it so that it is known that it is purely to him. The air smells slightly sweeter after you set up your prayer. Brother, you're muted. Good. Are our cabins all together? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a ship that's got to save space. So, kind of each person would share a wall with the other person, you know. Uh, but, the, you know, the end uh, rooms would have a wall that doesn't share a space. Okay, I'm saying. That's convenient in this case. I'm going to go over to Gar's, knock on his door. Does he have a door? Or does he just have like a curtain? Uh, there'd be doors. Okay. Knock on his door. I will open the door for you. And I'm going to step inside, yeah. claw right, on the sure. chest, Come and push in. him back, and shut the door. And then I'm going to take off my helmet. This bubble of air that becomes visible as I touch it. I pluck it off my head. Kind of glows red at the edges for a second there. And I'm going to put it on your head. Okay. Thank you. Back on that pier, everybody was doing what I was doing. And they were making assumptions. Let them assume that you cannot deal with going overboard. They may use that as a weakness. And now, it will not harm you. Do not tell anyone of this. Gar will just kind of... Okay. Looking at the empty space that the thing with the helmet is. You can't, yeah, you can't see anything. Don't take it off. Okay. Gar's just gonna poke it a couple times. Got it. It's 
kind of, yeah, it kind of has like a weird like resistance to it. Um, and you can feel like there's a slight weight on your head. Almost, if you don't think about it, you don't realize it's there. You will find in time that is quite comfortable to sleep in. I recommend you keep it on at all times. Whether or not you wear your armor is your choice. But I would suggest taking it off while we are traveling, unless you know you need it. Because if you fall overboard, I would like you to be able to get back up. You said it yourself, nobody dies. All right, I thank you. I will put it to good use. Although, hopefully, I don't have to. Let us pray for luck, then. And they turn, and they leave. While you're... While you say that, Gar already starts to pull out his flask, and then you are gone. And he just... Yeah, puts it away. <laughs> uh, anybody else? I'm going to bed. Until we are called by the navigator. Sure. Uh, it seems like there won't be any kind of calling tonight. Um, you'll all be sleeping in the ships and then uh, early rise to get underway. Okay. In that case, I have something I would like to do overnight because now I don't need to sleep. Okay. I'm going to take... Sure. <laughs> a bunch of the bone chips that we got and I'm going to make a powder out of them and I'm going to make them into a paste and I'm going to put it on the edge of the door so I will know if anybody has been in here when I'm not here. Okay. I like and, it. Um, just very simply, Devacle, before going to bed, um, he will take out a leather, uh, his leather that he uses um uses you know his, his sleeping leathers uh, and he will he will set them down and he will do a what he considers to be a makeshift prayer to Ankeli um, not that he knows much about Ankeli but uh, he will do his best and he and he'll roll his leather out and he'll just sit it on the ground and he'll sit there cross-legged with his palms up and meditate for a good half hour before going to bed just trying to reach out and offer his gratitude and his thanks and uh you know uh, if there's anything he can do to help he would like to do so just making himself open You as well kind of smell a sweetness in the air after you finish your meditation. Uh, Yune, there is a knock at your door. Um, come in? The door kind of opens almost seemingly of its own accord inward towards you, even though they're outward opening doors. Uh, and kind of like this rush of air comes in, slams the door behind and kind of forming from this black cloud from the ground stands a very familiar female figure. Uh -oh. Darling, you name my most interesting mortal. How are you? And standing before you is the form of Bellsmith. You didn't think I'd let your little group of merry men go on their way without me saying hello. It's been far too long. I've been far too busy. And the water is not quite my domain. It'd be a little bit harder for me to check in on you. So I have to say hello now. It is appreciated, my lady. The water is not quite my domain either. Oh, I am not my lady to you. You know you're my favorite. It's just uh, uh, the witch goddess to you. And she kind of laughs. <laughs> Joking. Smith is fine. I see you've picked up two strays. Oh, yes. Uh, they're wonderful, in, in my opinion. 
Yes, they seem very interesting. Uh, the uh, the seeker, I'd watch out for that one if I were you. Well, seekers... I know you two. I know you two are getting kind of close. Just be guarded. Seeker Pajat has only been kind. Of course. And aren't I always anything but kind before I lull in the unwary? Is a spider's web not tantalizing to the fly? Is the pitcher plant not delicious to the unsuspecting insect that flies upon it? I suppose you're right, but if I am the fly, it's an enjoyable existence. A fun way of looking at things. This is why you're my favorite. And the uh, the uh, the walking armor. An interesting choice of friends. I didn't normally pick you for a uh, legionnaire kind of person, but. Once again, another interesting find, not one that, uh, not usual for them to have uh, crises of faith. Very interesting. You'll have to watch out for that one as well. Watch out can have so many different meanings. Oh, I know, dear. That's why I use it. It wouldn't be fun if I gave you all the answers. And for now, I'll interpret it in my own way. As you rightly should. And she kind of looks you up and down. She's like, my dear, the only problem I have is it does not look like you've changed a bit since I've last seen you. Have you not been experimenting with your look? Well, Have you not been following that quest from inside that you should be following? It's been on my mind, but other things have been more important. There is nothing more important than bettering oneself, for that is how you reach a godhood. <laughs> Me? A god? <laughs> Well, well, okay, let's 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 slow it down, you know, metaphorically speaking or me speaking. I don't know how that quite works with gods being real. Let's just say maybe small changes. I don't want to push you too far, darling. Well, I'm interested. I I just it's it's been a higher priority to take care of the ones I care about. Then allow me to take care of you, if you allow me, of course. Oh, certainly. Uh, and she kind of uh, has you sit down on the bed. Uh, she sits, she sits down next to you, and she just kind of like leans over for like that side hug when you're sitting next to someone. Um, and along your arm, uh, she. Uh, uh, like kind of like your upper arm, like shoulder down to uh, bicep. Uh, she imprints another tattoo upon you. Uh, this one uh, of kind of like this uh, stylized um, fox made out of, of stars and a con kind of in a constellation pattern where the connections between the stars are made. Um, and then as you as she kind of pulls away from the hug, uh, you, you kind of feel a little bit different and she kind of just summons a mirror in her hand and holds it up and you notice there's a difference about you physically. You, <laughs> it's like you read my mind. I hope I didn't overstep my bounds, but I might have lightly read your mind to give you what you wanted, just hadn't vocalized yet. Why are you so kind to me? I don't really have anything to offer in return. 
I told you you were my favorite mortal. You intrigue me. For I'll all do. of the right reasons. Intrigue or entertain? Entertain makes you sound like a pet. And that's certainly not what you are. I envision you... Well, I can't say what I envision because sometimes what I, as a goddess, you speak things into existence quite literally, but I envision greatness. I envision change. I envision a new way of thinking. And it all stems from you, which is why I have such interest in you. Now, I must really go. It was great catching up. And, uh, how should I put this? You'll be seeing me a lot sooner than you think you will. I have no complaints about that, but the mouth soon might. Ah, uh, yes, another... Well, I won't judge the company you keep. That wouldn't be very fair of me. Uh, you know, just remember, if you see me unexpectedly, I did warn you. Goodbye now. I and hope she it's more of a promise than a warning. Gets up off the bed, opens the door, and kind of like turns back around. It's just like, and darling, like I said, you're on the water, not my domain. So you're going to have to look out for yourself this time. And she closes the door behind her. Ine will sit there quietly for a moment and just think on the things that Belsmith has said. And, and actually, even though Belsmith has left the building, um, <laughs> Yine will kind of say, directed towards Belsmith. I wouldn't keep the company that I do if I didn't find kinship with their journey. Secret Pajat, there's a knock at your door as well. Step up to it. Lean my ear next to it. Who's there? No answer. Stay to your business or leave. No answer. I'm going to wait about a minute. And then after a minute, I'm gonna back into the room and sit down facing the door for about an hour. Okay, but you leave and the door closed? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sienna, there is a knock at your door. Um, Just as when Devok came to her, she's just going to open it. You open it, uh, and standing there is this very, very beautiful woman, um, you know, lower cut, uh, very beautiful velvet red dress, um, just kind of the stereotypical perfect uh, model kind of cut with curves and long, beautiful hair. She kind of just looks, she's like, Thank you. And she sweeps past you uh, and sits on your bed, kind of laying on it. And just like. If you're here to seduce me, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. <laughs> oh, I can see why you've found this group. You all have this uncanny talent of being funny without trying to be funny. And she'll kind of uh, uh, kind of look you up and down once uh, and just be like, so you have made an interesting choice in who to worship. And why would you say that it's interesting? I'm genuinely curious. Well, uh, it's not many that can reconcile being 
a mentally sound person with worshiping a death god. I guess you can say I had a calling, but that's besides the point. Who are you? And why have you come me? to my room? I am, well, let's say I am a, a recruiter, a lobbyist. I'm lobbying for you to consider worshiping someone else. If Sienna had eyebrows, they would definitely be risen at this point. Um, she definitely makes somewhat of a surprised expression and she says, why would you choose me of all people at this time of night? Well, because I've already talked to one of your friends and I tried talking to another, but she was very rude. Uh, and I, now I'm talking to you. And your name is? Uh, hmm, names, tricky things, those. Let's not worry about my name for now. Let's talk about what I can offer. I can offer... If it's killing you like, I can offer that. If it's power you like, I can offer that. And, you know... If it's the ability to experience a physical form again, I can potentially offer that too. You offer me all these things, but not a name. Well, I, I can't I can't just give away everything, can I? Part of the fun is guessing. Hmm. Are you of this world? Perhaps a deity? No. no. Oh, that's two different questions, my dear. I would like to hear the answer to both. <clears throat> Some might say I'm originally of this world. And yes, I am. And you came all this way, it took all this time to ask me to worship you. Why am I of such importance? Well, that sounds very vain when you put it that way. It makes me sound like a crazy person. Well, uh, I think you're not a person. You're let's addicted. just say, uh, if, especially if you ask around your little group, uh, everyone knows of me. Uh, and I've done them great favors in the past. Uh, they, are, they are the heroes of Elysian because of me. Um, would Sianna know that this is Belzameth at this point? Uh, putting together kind of two and two and from, they, like, the group would have definitely told all of you, uh, like how things went down and kind of the full mm -hmm. story of your, of their heroes. Um, so you could kind of, you'd be able to put two and two and make a very educated guess that this is probably Belzameth. I see. I see. I have a question. Sure. Is Sianna's room next to mine? Uh, we'll make a, a, a percentage roll for that one. Higher if one. I had any say in it, I would like for Sayana's room to be next to mine. Sure. 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 We'll allow for that. Uh, I like that. You, you do not, you do not hear anything though. Nothing at all. Sitting it alone is. in an empty room with my mm -hmm. ears cocked to each wall. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay. It is quiet, is as, quiet as the tomb. Okay. That works for like, me. I'm not all you anything. yeah, all you hear is like the creaking of the boat kind of silently bobbing in the uh in the in the harbor. That's it. <clears throat> but yeah, so you could you could make a very educated guess. This is Belsameth. Okay. Um Cyan is going to say my lady Belsameth is uh, correct. Yes. Very smart of you. Mm, such a tantalizing offer that you've given me, but um, I'm afraid that I may need some time to consider. It's... Uh, like I said, I only came for you. I, my, my goal initially was to have you consider. And just what remember, if... all Van Gaal offers you is bloodshed, pestilence, and terror. That's kind of all in the same umbrella. Very boring 
very unfriendly like there is something that you could perhaps help me with that would quicken my decision making process let me hear it I fucking love this bitch can you tell me of who I was before I became as you see me now ah that is something I could find out one of two ways the first one would be to ask dear old Corian which I doubt he'll tell me the second well the second I'm working on and Let's just say following the path you're following will help me get that information for you. You mean this mission that we're on at the moment? Exactly. And you don't need anything more than just simply following along and doing what we were asked. Just keep doing what you're doing. Hmm. Okay, I can do that. Excellent, my dear. Uh, feel free to... I didn't visit everyone tonight. Don't have the time. Uh, and honestly, there's some of them I just don't care to see. Uh, feel free to tell the rest of your friends I said hello, though. And um, uh, I'll be waiting for them. I'll pass the message along. Excellent. And with that, she'll get up and leave and close the door behind her. Um, I think at that point, um, how is the layout of our rooms? Is there some central point that kind of leads us all to the the sleeping quarters or? Uh, so uh, it's kind of like you go down the, the stairs from the main deck into mm -hmm. this hallway of rooms. Uh, and then they're, and they're kind of all be next to mm -hmm. one another. And then there'd be another set of stairs going down to the to the bottom uh, level. I see. Um, I think at that point, after Belzameth has left, Cyan is going to stand point at the choke point that you have to go past to get to all the rooms. And she's going to stand silent and unmoving until the day. Okay. Keeping guard, more or less. Sure. Uh, the next morning does come. Uh, and bright and early before the sun has even fully like as it's just as it's starting to come up over the horizon uh, a, uh, a whistle is blown loudly and the anchor is pulled up from your ship and all the ships next to you the sailors start to go about their business uh, guiding your ships uh, out of the dock out of the harbor uh, out into the open water uh, once you are on open water, the sails are let loose, uh, fully open, and uh, you are now have officially started your journey to find the Drifting Isle. The first day's sailing goes by without any real incident. Um, you can get, you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish that could be done on a boat. Um, nothing is really asked of you day to day activity wise to be done. They don't. They don't ask you to help with the rigging or managing the sails or even doing lookout or anything like that. You're kind of left to your own devices on what you'd like to do. Um, if you just wanted to twiddle your thumbs, you know, watch the uh, watch out. You were far enough away from the other boats that you can't really like interact with anybody on them. Um, they're all kind of spread out pretty far from each other. Um, there's nothing if there's nothing really you want to do go ahead when the whistle hits i am out the door i am stepping out to where i'm allowed to be out to and seeing what the fuck is going on and yeah, then you immediately can be on, going you, back to check on everybody else yeah you can be on the main deck and, and see everything and you see they're just get, getting ready to cast off um everyone kind of wakes up in different times along the journey along the preparations getting out we'll say by the time you guys have hit open water everyone is up and awake um, and so you can all talk to one another if you want. I'm getting everybody up. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's up. You're in open water. The sails are unfurled. Uh, the ships have kind of taken this loose formation. Uh, and as you all kind of gather 
we'll say kind of like uh, there'd be like a smallish mess area on the same level as your uh, quarters that y'all can gather at. Uh, the first thing you all notice immediately uh, is Yane. He look hello, nice. Hello, hello Yane. Nice haircut. Yeah, well, and then I turn to Sayana and I say, were you there all night? Yes. I don't sleep. I'll keep that in mind. Did anybody visit you? Knock on your door in the middle. Also meth. <laughs> oh, again with her. Yes. And those meth the regards to everyone. I, I actually kind of liked her. Why are we. Didn't even get any of that ale. She did that? Yes. And and this. And Yane will reveal the tattoo. She did. And I, I take Yane's arm and I'm like straight up looking at every detail of this fucking tattoo. Yane is like a pretzel right now. <laughs> Just twist. Twist. She did that? Mm-hmm. I can do better than that. Ask me next time. All right, I'll ask you today. I'll take one. Not that, but something. Today, right now? You got anything better to do? Yes, I intend to get the full briefing from the captain first as to what we're doing, completely disregarding what the navigator said. And then I plan on updating all of you on that, and then I plan on eating something. Very time consuming. Sounds like something do you really I need, need to, to or if you don't need to sleep, do you need to eat? <sighs> Ask Sayan. Apparently she doesn't need something. to sleep. <laughs> what what do we have to eat? Get whatever qualifies for breakfast and eggs uh so since since you just left port uh you actually still have like fresh fr- fresh food um so you'd have uh some vegetables some fruit um you know fresh bread uh a little bit of uh meat i'm just gonna get a plate of it and i'm gonna sit down and go i could have slept through this but okay here we are if you don't mind me asking, T- Sayana told us that Belsameth came, right? And said, and, and gave her regards to all of you. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind, I apologize. Um, what, other than the regards, obviously, that um, Belsameth sent, what did you talk about, Sayana? But for someone who doesn't care about the gods, you sure do have a, question, a lot of questions about one. Oh, if I ever gave the impression that I do not care about the gods, I am sorely mistaken. Uh, I'm, I'm sorely sorry. Um, I care deeply about the gods because I'm going to kill them. Well, then I don't think we have anything to talk about at this moment, Lamalthun. Would that not be a worthy fight, though? To see Lamalthun try and take on Belsina, Bengal would be proud. I mean, I blood like... will be shed. And he will be I would hate to see you die, Lamalthu, and I beg you reconsider. I. And if you were to insist, Lamalthu, I wouldn't It'd trust him with it fight. either. Don't get me wrong, but I want to know. Ben Summit spoke with you, both of you. Anybody else? Thankfully, no. <laughs> no, she skipped over me this time. No. no. <laughs> the mouth she knocked on your door. She knocked on your door. About what time? It was like dead of night. Dead of night for me, too? Approximately. Yes. Okay. <coughs> I may have pissed her off. <laughs> <laughs> me Good too. job. Seriously. Good job. I mean, give her a I'm, high five. She I'm not raising my hand to. up. I'm not fucking moving my hand off the staff. Oh, 
Gar is uh, left hanging. Oh no. Uh, and then Gar puts his hand on Pijot's shoulder and does the tap tap. Like I totally meant to do that. Give you a good <laughs> awkward, Gar's like... tap. You know, you had a yeah, comment yeah, for me? Exactly. Just inside her. Gar oh, Yine is trying to say something. Uh, okay. Oh, uh Sorry. I was just <laughs> Why killing the gods? I understand not following them and, and, and your whole no gods, no masters thing, but killing them seems a bit unfair when they're just trying to exist like we are. In the Broadreach Forest, when a predator larger than anybody in your clan wandered near, you either scared it off or you took it down as a thing, yeah? I think that's it for the mountain. He is afraid. He wants to survive. He picks the largest animal that he can find and he hisses at it. I don't think he's wrong to do so. I think he's a fool to do so. Wouldn't be but the there's first... validity. Would not be the first foolish thing nor the last foolish thing I'll do. I, I do have a question for Gar. Like, okay. What is the animosity? Where's the animosity come from? Like, I understand she's antithetical to your ways of being and your beliefs, but animosity? Like, you could just not care. You do remember the first time we met her, right? I wasn't there, so no. Oh, that's right. That was before... So she lured us in with, uh, uh, well, let's just say, aside from the food and drink, she lured us in, and the with drink was amazing, drink. and I and I didn't get to keep any of it, and also, uh, okay. I hate her, room. she's an old hag. <laughs> I should have you considered it, that? It comes back to booze, all right. <laughs> Have you considered asking her nicely for it? I refuse. I hate that hag. She sucks. Her sister's better and prettier, too. <laughs> I'm going to start eating my food. I'm going to take my plate with the meat on it and just start laughing my way up deck. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Just imagine Devok doing that thing where like he's eating a piece of like dried bacon or something is like laughing like he does the like choke like <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he, <laughs> I keep laughing he's like he, yeah he's exactly like <laughs> oh belts him his fault you're choking <laughs> while he's choking I'm going to turn to Lamalthun and Gar and Sayana, and I am going to say, you could stand to learn a thing or two from him. <laughs> uh, what are they doing for you? Choking on food? Why? Yes, I'd have to agree with Yine. I don't want to choke on food. <laughs> you don't have to worry about choking on food, Sayana. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. That's good for me. You have to worry about falling overboard. <laughs> I mean, you would come to get me from the bottom of the ocean, right? I mean, I could wait for as long as you you wouldn't come get me, never mind. Could you the ships walk? would keep moving. Regardless okay. of what we choose, the ships would keep moving. I mean, They're I'm not going to back. stop to investigate. They're going to disqualify the rest of us. So, you are not going to fall overboard. And we do not have to account for that. Stay near the ropes. You understand this. I understand. The sea god. Whatever her name was. Pray to that one. What was her name again? She's going to whisper that to Lamalfi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why would she ask Lamalfi? <laughs> He's probably standing closest to her. Um, so, Steve... So st Play out of character. Player Steve forgets the name. However, Lamalthun Mon Mon Mono has a plus six religion. Um, so Lamalthun. Yeah, would, you would know. Yeah, Lamalthun would whisper back. Monoway, is that right? 
it, no, it, no, is, it is one away. Try to that one then. Uh, What's uh, it uh, going uh, to get you, Sayana? Um, ask yourself that. And then ask what you can do with it. She's going to smile and say nothing. You may want to ask right. yourself what you want to do with it first. And then I'm going to stand and watch everybody eat and count how many sailors are on board. <laughs> uh, looks like there are... Um, 12 sailors on board. Now, Sayana, do you have any thought where you could actually have, like, a small amount of rope attached to you? Like, could we just rope your armor? Do you guys leash Sayana? <laughs> Put the fucking no. baby buggy on Sayana! <laughs> yeah. Tire to tire to gar! <laughs> It'll work! <laughs> oh no, don't tie Sayana to gar. Please make it a short leash. chain armor falling <laughs> overboard. This is the best idea. Oh no! Yeah, it's perfect. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it would make more sense to tie me to Devok instead of Gar. Yes, we will both sink. It's <laughs> <laughs> mostly I can't swim. if you started falling off oh, of the no. ship, then there's an entire thing of rope between you and us so we can grab the rope if you fell off. This may work. Yeah, put it on Gar. Just have him act like a post. If he braces for it, he'll be fine. I'm I'm sorry. In character. Yes, we are going to tie you to Gar. In the event that there's a storm or we need to move fast. Prepare a lasso ahead of time. We'll get your measurements. It's a just in case. You two operate well when close together. Let's keep it that way. So I feel Fair like. It, so I feel like it's about this time. Devok gets up to the deck and, okay, out of character for a second. What was, what was the goddess's name? I'm fucking. Momoa. Manoa. Bellsmith. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna go up, and he's gonna be chewing on his little you know piece of salted meat. And he's gonna take it over to the railing. Uh, and he's gonna lean over. And he's gonna chuckle to himself, and he's just gonna offer up this one prayer to Belsmith. Well done. <laughs> I couldn't have planned it better myself. Well done. What? <laughs> and that's all he's gonna say. And he's gonna chew on his jerky. <laughs> it's between Devok and Belsmith. We don't need to understand. Wow. <laughs> Um, we can address this whenever you want, Patty, but I would actually like to make my way to the cargo hold. Okay. You do? Oh, okay. Um, no, I just actually just want to investigate the cargo hold. Like, I just want oh. to check it for, you know, to see what, what do they bring other than, you know, I assume potable water, some food, some, like, regular stuff, but are they... I got anything down here that, that, that I can I can investigate and find out? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll actually give it to you free, but check because there's like you just have so much free. Like there's enough free time today that you can spend enough time to like literally go through each crate in here and look through it. Okay. Um, it's mainly just you know fresh water, food. Um, there are like some uh, long spears, uh, and um, uh, cannonballs and things like that. Uh, to defend the ship. Oh, there's cannons? Um, yes, the ship has cannons. Oh, fucking dope. Okay. Um, there's also long spears uh, for the sailors to use in uh, combat. Uh, these spears are definitely designed for tentacled creatures. <gasps> oh, no. Um, okay. Don't like that. I'm trying to think what else would be down here. Uh, that's about it. Really. Okay, so there's... yeah, nothing really interesting in here. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure they weren't carrying like you know, the 
Oh, what's that shit in Divinity? It, like, insta-kills you? Stowaway? <laughs> Phazon? Dynamite. 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 We're just gonna go with dynamite. We're just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, nothing, nothing crazy down here. Okay. But they have cannons. Yes, the ship does have cancer. So they should have powder and... Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think for one second, how easily could I cannon that mirror <laughs> mage's ship? <laughs> uh, the ships are all strategically no, outside. I know, I know. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the rest of the day passes by. Um, into the night... Fall asleep again the next day. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the next day, another day of sailing. Nothing happens. That night, when all the ships are brought together, uh, the navigator calls for uh, all the uh, groups to meet. Um, and everyone kind of assembles on the deck of their own ships. The ship's being close enough now that uh, it'd be possible to address all of you on your on the decks of your ships. <clears throat> I promised you more information, and I am going to deliver. The Blossoming Sea is home to the Drifting Isle. The Drifting Isle, I don't know how much any of you know, either through rumor, story, or fact, but I can tell you the Drifting Isle is this planar anomaly and it seems to be drawn to those that need to be rescued or need it to survive but if it is used by those who know by those who know how it unlocks the ability to travel among the planes luckily for all of you I am one of those people Using this ability, we will travel what would take us a year at sea easily in a week. Hmm. The trick is finding it. Like I said, it reveals itself to those in need, but otherwise it is almost impossible to find. And that is how the island operates normally. I have discovered through my many talents and resources that an entity has taken over the isle and corrupted it for their own use. An entity that calls itself Utagast. And Utagast has corrupted a spawn of the water plane. You all give it the name, Give you would give this spawn the name of Kraken. Oh, God damn it! Oh, it's fucking back. And this, this spawn, this Kraken, has been perverted and mind controlled by Utagast and does its bidding. So our plan, we are going to make an enemy of Utagast, and by doing so, draw out its forces, draw out the island itself. Hopefully, by pissing it off enough, it will attempt to draw us to the island itself to finish us off personally. There, we will destroy Utagast reclaim control over the island, travel through it to our ultimate destination. Excellent! I see nothing wrong with this plan. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. What are the known capabilities of this Utagast figure? <clears throat> Utagast is a star spawn of ancient gods, of the ancient ones that came before. <clears throat> I believe 
the inhabitants of this plane would call it Aboleth. It has the ability to control minds, create minions of its doing, and hold large amounts of power. It probably is attempting to use the Isle to eventually, when it has gathered enough strength and power, travel to the realm of the gods and attempt to destroy them. That is just my guess, however, I do not know for certain. I don't plan on asking it. Known weaknesses? It is a powerful, ancient creature. Not many. Are the cannons aren't fighting? going to My apologies. Are we planning on fighting this thing on the water? And dying quickly? <clears throat> I am not sure how we will attack this thing. Uh, I'm sure we will have to deal with its kraken in some way, shape, or form. And we'll probably have to deal with that in the water before we're able to find the isle. So, yes, there will be some fighting. How can we assist? By killing it. All of you will be working together. This will be a mighty beast that will need to be... The, all of you will need to assist in destroying it. This is why we cannot have any infighting. This is why we cannot have anyone attempting to sabotage one another. As by hurting one another, you are ultimately condemning yourself to death. Naturally. Shall I coordinate the attack plan then? He just looks at you and is just like, No. I will handle that. Please keep me informed. It is at the top of my list. I step know back the over with the rest. This is what I was going to say, you know, the best laid plans of Manticore and men often go awry. What is our contingency plan if things don't go well for us? If things don't, don't go well in this plan, it means you die, and that means there's not, there's not the need for another plan, so... That's it? No plan for escape, or...? You signed Perhaps. up to complete this mission. There is no turning back or going back. Perhaps my lady Saito has some advice. As we've been raided by a party of 17 from my lady hey. Saito. <laughs> my lady Saito, thank you for the raid. Appreciate that. Welcome, friends. We are right here at the end of our session, but <clears throat> he's kind of... Uh, just uh, looks all the and just like, well, that is that. That is what is going to happen. That is why you were here. Oh, and uh, it's not all bad. Cheer up. Our ultimate destination is the Dragonlands. And with that, we'll end tonight's session. Yay! <laughs> Alrighty. That has been our session for tonight. Our players have finally, I'm sure they've guessed it already by the name of our game, but have finally realized that they are on a crash course with the Dragonlands. <laughs> You're a crash course with the Dragonlands. Got him. No, you. <laughs> uh, it has been a pleasure telling the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoyed performing it for you. I'd like to once again thank Onyx Path Publishing, Astral Tabletop, and Vinsfept. A special shout out goes to all of our Patreon subscribers, Twitch subscribers, and just to you, the normal everyday viewer, for joining us on this wonderful trip through the Scarred Lens. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to us on Twitch. Remember, you can always use your free subscription you get with Amazon to subscribe to us. Check out our works on GM's Guild and Drive-Thru RPG. Get some bodacious merch on our merch store. Join our Discord to be part of the best community on the internet. The Go cool support Discord. Gem 
It is cool Discord. Go support Jim Hammer and Sons Kickstarter, which linky link, please, Ambrose. Uh, and uh, check out no, our sponsors on VorpalTales.com. Let's hear from our players now. Once again, your name, handle, character, and where people can find you. Hello, I am Steve. Pronouns are he, him. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Tonight I played Le Malfoon, who was kind of extra bitchy tonight. Um, <laughs> next time you'll find me will be Sunday for Colt. I play an insane person who doesn't want aliens to suck his brain out, and he has a lot of guns. Um, does he have a Fallout shelter too? Back, back, uh, back home. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, <clears throat> on that note, I am Jay Trevelyan, otherwise known as John, and have been Devok, our Eldritch Knight of Flame and Fire. And, uh, yeah, I will be again here for Thursday for here in Purple Tales, and that show's name escapes me. So, yep. Bye, everyone. Good night. Hi, I'm Birdie, and I was Secret Pajat, who uses they, them pronouns. I'm not a warlock, and I will not tell you otherwise. Um, totally not warlock. I'm going to be here next week, and I hope to see you there, hopefully, earlier in the evening, maybe. Hashtag not a warlock. Hashtag not a warlock. Not a warlock, though. Not Seriously. a warlock. Not a warlock. <laughs> look into my eyes. Do I look like I do dark magic? <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> I can't help that. It's my face. <laughs> Fair. I, that was wrong of me to be judgmental. I apologize. <laughs> Well, now okay. that you understand where this perception comes from, you can dispel it. Yes, I can I can be more educated and educate others. Dispel or believe it in it more fully. I don't know. Hi you guys, my name's Keems. You can find me on the interwebs at it's me Keems. Tonight I played Sayana, the death cleric and also Halloweenaire who follows Van Gaal. Um maybe that will be changing in her future. Who knows? Oh my. <laughs> Hashtag Bellsmith best guy. <laughs> oh goodness. Hey everybody! I have been Yune and uh Yune has been blessed by Bellsmith, the gracious and wonderful goddess. Uh and Yo, you That's got really... divine free HRT for real? Pretty much, yeah. Can you fucking hook me up, please? <laughs> um, like IRL, I wish. Send um... <laughs> Bill Smith my way. I'm a believer. What the fuck ever. I'm a believer. Ooh, I have we created an egregore? This should be interesting. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was really hoping to get a reaction from Steve, aka Lamalthun, with the whole <laughs> wonderful Bellsmith, but oh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, I now return <laughs> to being Ambrose, who is uh, not yet any HRT in a trench coat, but someday. Someday. Hello and goodbye, all. I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sully. I, I have been Gar. And I have been smack talking a hag named Bellsmith. <laughs> All mm. over beer that I didn't get to keep. <laughs> uh, you can find me online at Sword of Solid, like I said. And next time you'll see me will be Monday for Delta Green, where hopefully I'm going to die this time. Oh shit, hoping for death. I've been hoping for death since day one. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, depressing. <laughs> Thank you, players. Now, for the true fans, we shall vote. Our players will each nominate one other player, but new to Four Tales, you, the audience, can vote for your favorite player as well. We shall tally the votes in chat after we sign off and reward our players appropriately. So, please, players, please be awesome to one another. Oh, boy. Um, I am going to give... Jeez. Oh my gosh, tonight was like 
Yee, good. Um, I'm gonna give my vote to Keem slash Sayana. Um, I'm liking where her character is going in the the questioning her god and changing and all that stuff. Like, I'm I'm, I'm planning on having a cool conversation with her later based on our short interaction at breakfast. So. Excellent. Uh, my vote. I'm trying. I apologize. I'm trying to figure out if there's a reason I shouldn't give it to this person, or even if there's a better moment in my mind. And I don't think I can find one, so I'm giving mine to Birdie again tonight. Fuck me. Um, I give it to you every week, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> that being said, not letting a god in your room, <laughs> or just like being like knock knock who's there stitch your business or leave like <laughs> that was ballsy and interesting and I, I i like the i like the fact that you didn't let the like the meta game influence what secret bizarre's decision was going to be well thank you <laughs> incidentally i'm voting for you because that was a fantastic fucking laugh <laughs> well thank you perfectly timed <laughs> beautifully executed I love Devok, y'all. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, yeah. That's big praise right here. Who doesn't love Devok? <sighs> so it's I was really actually nice going guy. to give my vote to Devok um, because of that <laughs> accent, that imitation of Seeker Pajat he just did. Um, <laughs> and also because of the conversation that he and Sayana had. Um, but I think now you got one. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Gar. Um, for literally holding a grudge over some beer that he didn't get. I, oh, th from a literal That's diet. the funniest shit ever. That was oh my God. so fucking funny. <laughs> oh my God. And Devok knew instantly when he said, I got beer and I couldn't keep it. It was just like, that's exactly why he hates her. There's no that's other reason. So All of his other shit's excuses. You can trust him. You <laughs> can trust been, him. He's like... Four year, three years game time <coughs> since that happened. Yeah, it's still a grudge. <laughs> mm -hmm. still didn't get that recipe. <laughs> awesome. I am going to go with. I, I'm going to give it to John for that magnificent eating the food and walking away, which <laughs> seems. Very minor in 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 all of the roleplay that happened. However, however, the way that you did it and the way that you described it, I it was a video in my head. It was fucking. And wild. there was like an orc version of John with the plate with the giant turkey leg from the medieval fair, and he's like, not a fun. you know, and <laughs> he's just yeah. It, and that just goes to show you too. Um, sorry, this is just a little extra note. It's just it's the little things. And it's the little things. The little things. Thank you very much. I'll keep that in mind. I'm gonna have to give mine to Estiana because just the random reactions of like, yeah, oh yeah. Which one was that one again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome being awesome to each other. All those notes and more were quite amazing. I have been Patty Shakes underscore, and I encourage you, please watch Warple Tales, other shows, which include tomorrow, well, technically today, uh, <laughs> Saturday, uh, there's another Dungeons and Dragons game, Usurpers of Ruination at seven. There's also SCP, the tabletop role-playing game, Mimetic Hazard, it's a great name, I didn't realize uh, we were doing a fucking SCP game. What? Mm -hmm. I know. I'm so I think, jelly. Is it the first? Se is it the first session? It might be yeah, the first session. Yeah, it will I'm be. gonna go cheer them on. Fuck yeah! Uh, Sunday we were playing Fiasco and Phantas Phantasmagoria. That's also another great name. Uh, Monday is Delta Green and Mythos World. Tuesday is Black Void. Wednesday is Acton Cthulhu. 
Thursday is Mage the Awakening and Pathfinder. And then once again on Friday, the early show is Call of Cthulhu. And then you're kind of right back here for Starlands Draco Genesis with this lovely bunch of human beings. We hope you enjoyed our story tonight. We look forward to seeing you in the future to continue the tale. Until next time, may Corian light your way. Stay safe, stay awesome, stay adventurous, make good choices, and wear a mask. Bird up. It's the God. word. Bird up. God damn it. No, don't do that.